what about the European landscape then over the next five to ten years? You did mention the Euro earlier, but well, is it, it going to continue in a sort of crawl along way, or do you think there'll be a uh, well, That should be directed to people who are intimately acquainted with the breakup of the lunacy that is the EU and the Eurozone. I don't know who's asked for that, but undoubtedly the objectives of the EU in practice are beginning to irritate a lot of people, not just one or two theoreticians. And uh, I think there will come a point when, not just in this country, when people say we absolutely will no longer play a part of this nonsense. I don't doubt that uh, if and when that comes to pass, and I think it will, there will be many risks generally undertaken. The idea behind the formation of the EU, which of course was to avoid another European war, comparable to the First and Second World Wars, was a wholly noble objective. But the question is, as the uh, EU has been constructed in practice, will this be the result that obtains? Well, I think it won't. I, I think it's a huge mistake to make enemies of significant uh, percentages of one's population. That's what governments have done in Europe for a long time. They argue that uh, what they've done is morally justified and justifiable. But the, I'm afraid that the way they've gone about it is so palpably bound to end in tears I don't think their position is easily defended. How quickly do you think the EU might unravel? Oh, who knows? I don't know. But, uh, for instance, people forget that uh, the French banks have astonishing debts uh, which haven't been resolved at all. The German banks are not in a healthy position. The Greek exit is well known and well flagged up. But relative to the whole of the euros, and the amount there considered by way of debt is fairly slight. The ripple effect, however, could be very substantial elsewhere in the zone. As to where first, to what effect, I, I'm just not qualified to comment. Does it worry you? Well, it does, in the sense that I think it's very foolish to conduct oneself foolishly. <laughs> the risk of stating the obvious. And it seems to me that for many years uh, this country's citizens have in aggregate behaved foolishly. And of course you don't have to be very imaginative to see that folly has occurred elsewhere. It can't be right for large percentages, I'm talking about 30, 40, 50 percent of youth, youth being unemployed if ever one had to devise an arrangement where demagogues would succeed, that is surely it. Young men are able to run around, they're fit, and they're sure they're right. And they, all they have to do is listen to a fellow who says, this is the, I know the way forward. Because their reply is, well, we certainly don't think those who are currently in charge know the way forward. So we'll listen to someone who gives us some pride, gives us some hope, and claims to know the way forward. And that's exactly how troubles arise. I know those who invented the EU think that by having a monopoly on the deployment of soldiers, uh, terrible atrocities will be avoided because the EU will send the troops wherever it's required to suppress this outbreak of behavior. But that's not my impression as to how people behave. I think uh, if they feel that they are being stopped from expressing themselves naturally, or as they see it naturally and reasonably, uh, then they'll go ahead and behave uh, unreasonably, taking the longer term. Although, of course, in the short term, they may be behaving very reasonably. There has to be a balance in this life, and I'm afraid the fools who've governed us in recent years have refused to take that into account. Not so much here, but certainly in France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, these things are now very serious. And the consequences, I think, can be really massive. As regards the timing of the emergence of these difficulties, I hesitate to say. What's your thoughts on EU monetary policy and the QE at the moment, then? 
Well, I think I've covered that earlier. But the idea that the ECB goes on buying uh, government's debt expressed in euro simply to support the euro and simultaneously to keep interest rates low strikes me as insane. Because all that will happen is the ECB will end up being owed a vast amount of money which will never be available to it. And that means the deficit on the ECB will have to be made good by members of the Eurozone, for starters, and quite possibly members of EU as a whole. And this, of course, can't be done. There won't be the money there. Mm.